Alrighty, everybody, welcome back to Three Balls and a Puck. I'm your host, Bradley Velasquez. I'm here with Daniel, last name Boxberger, Kevin Briones over there, and today we're going to talk a little NBA. Uh, we want to talk about the two teams that finished in the AC last year for the playoffs. So in the Western Conference, we're going to talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves. We wrote their starting lineup, projected, I mean, it's not perfect. And then in the Eastern Conference, you can see the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, we're just going to talk a little bit where we think these teams are headed, what we see in the future for them. Are they going the right way? Are they going the wrong way? Um, but I'm going to go ahead and kick it to Daniel over here and go ahead and just maybe give us your thoughts on that. Okay. Um, I'll do one team at a time. We'll kind of go in depth on each one. Okay. So the Timberwolves. So you have Teague, Butler, Wiggins, Gibson, Towns as your starting lineup. Um, everybody knows Towns is a beast. Um, he's kind of a guy you want to build around. Um, there has been concerns about work ethic and defense this offseason that just came out. Um, and then there's been rumblings about Wiggins with the same issues and Butler maybe not being happy. Um, T, good player, maybe not the best fit. And Gibson is just kind of like the quote-unquote blue guy. Um, yeah. That'll probably fit anywhere he goes. Um, that's just I just wanted to do a brief or a starting line before we all dive in. Um, so the Timberwolves, a lot of it, a lot of people either have them turn it up and think the stuff they're talking about isn't a big deal to figure it out. There's too much talent, or they say no, they're gonna just as they're getting good, they're gonna go back down. Um, I tend to go on to they're gonna go back down just because I believe Butler won't be there after a year. Um, I will say that I think I don't know, you know, none of us are in Minnesota, but with Towns work ethic, defense, all that. I kind of feel like that might be from Butler. If you guys remember, Butler's kind of good hard worker, crazy hard worker, almost a little bit like Kobe where he's insane, so he might expect a little bit more than um, most people. So maybe that's overblown, but Wiggins, you heard that in college, and you're still hearing it. So from an outsider casual fan, I tend to think that Towns is fine. Wiggins might be traded with the contract, and I just don't see they're going to be able to do enough to keep Butler. Um, I want to give you guys a second to kind of go in depth too. Gibson is just a, uh, the coach's guy, Tom Thibodeau. And Teague is a good player, but not really necessarily a good fit because he's not a good shooter. He's a slasher, kind of like Jimmy Butler and Wiggins. Um, but there is a lot of talent there. Yeah, definitely starts off with Towns, the biggest talent there. I mean, Butler's right up there, but Towns like the guy you build your core around. Stands out. Man. Yeah. Um, Butler, like I said, he might be traded. Wiggins, my biggest thing is like they signed him that big contract and telling him, well, we need you to produce more. It's like you signed him the contract yeah, expecting yeah. like that for him to do it, and he hasn't done it. Like last year, didn't do it, and then, like I said, the work ethic and stuff. It's just like if, if you trade him, you got to get something out of him. I don't know what you can, but I don't think with Wiggins there, they're gonna be like trending in the right direction. Do you um, think they're gonna be trending down? I think they're gonna be trending down. Yeah. And even you have to have Wiggins if they. Do something with Butler, maybe they get some out of it. Yeah, I don't, I'd say they're downward. Well, I'm definitely in the minority then. Um, I have them making the playoffs. If you watched our previous video, I have them in the playoffs. Um, I think Wiggins, and don't like go, oh, well, where did you get this knowledge from? There is no knowledge. This is just I have a feeling Wiggins is going to make that next step. You're right. I never understood, like, uh, a lot of times they, in regards to the contract, you'll hear people, they go, uh, we are paying for future performances, but you're only paying for future performances if you've seen something in the past. With Wiggins, you always kind of feel like, ah, well, I need 10 more percent. Yeah. Uh, he'll have a game here and there, but even in those games, you still feel like you need 10, 15 more percent. Um, so I just have a hunch he's going to turn it around, so I have him trending up. I think that keeps Butler and down. I just think second year with Thibodeau, obviously Butler and Gibson know him uh, through the coaching days. So I just think defensively they're going to be one of the better teams in the yeah, they're going to need Wiggins to make that step because if he doesn't, that's going to be key to keeping yeah. Butler. Oh, if he doesn't, then Butler, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Sayonara, right? I think, yeah. Um, I think we all agree we like the talent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, you know, like last year like before all this happened, it was like everyone's like, oh, they're going to be at least in the top four seed yeah. and stuff, and they just kind of fell off. Yeah, I feel for Minnesota. They, they kind of like, they could easily be, like you said, uh, 14 if they kind of figure it out. Um, even an eighth seed in the West, it's like, that's so good because you're well, in the West. Right, but you got to right. remember, for Jimmy Butler now, an eighth seed in the West, now LeBron coming over, do you want to struggle to make the playoffs in the West, or do you just want to hightail it to the back uh -oh. to the Eastern Conference yeah. where you could be over there with the what, Kawhi and yeah, Giannis? Like, uh, yeah, that's my 
just for me personally, my favorite little made-up trade I think is going to happen is Wiggins for John Wall. But yeah, I just think that Could because have. the contracts are so bloated and they're both need a mix-up, that that might be a good fit. Um, hmm. But that's just my own little thing. So let's, uh, let's move on to Milwaukee Bucks. But before Milwaukee attack the Oklahoma Bucks. Milwaukee Bucks move on to the Eastern Conference now and talk about the Milwaukee Bucks. So, Kevin, you want to take it? All right, for the Bucks, we have the top five talent-wise, we think. We have Bledsoe, Brogdon, Middleton, Giannis, and Henson. It might be Plumlee, we don't know, like, starting center-wise. You're not going to give a stab at that last name? Eh, it's okay, I'll let <laughs> one of you guys try that. <laughs> um, obviously, the star is Giannis. Yeah. That guy's stud. Um, for me, personally, I think they're going to be on the upward trend. I mean, you have such good talent with Brogdon, Middleton, Giannis. Bledsoe... And he's replaceable, <laughs> and like so is Henson. <laughs> <laughs> so, I would say they're going on the upper trend. They're going to be higher than the AC, especially with the East not being yeah. that like dominant and stuff. I think they could be in the top four yeah. and easily. Um, yeah. What do you guys? Quick little opinion over it. Um. Yeah, I think this team is just basically as far as Giannis can carry them. I mean, they have talent. We know they're going to be in the playoffs. Um, obviously, LeBron leaving, I think, in our prediction, I'd have to look back at it, but I'm pretty sure I have them in the top four. I'm pretty sure you do as well. Um, he might be the best player in the conference other than Kawhi. So, to me, it goes, what are they going to be able to do in the playoffs to help Giannis? Because they're going to be in the playoffs. So, they're definitely trending up. Uh, I think everyone in the East is trending up now that uh, LeBron James isn't in the Eastern Conference. Um, well, yeah, pretty simple. Yeah, if you watch the video, I'm huge on the Bucks this year. Um, my two main points is obviously Giannis, because um, he's a star. I think he's the best in the East, uh, slightly over um, Kyrie Irving. And then Kawhi, I'd probably put him equal, but Kawhi's off the injury. I haven't seen him, yeah. so I'm going to give it to Giannis. Um, but the, the main thing is the new coach, which I'm forgetting his name is like, Buzzheim or something like that. Yeah. He's the guy basically that led that crappy Hawks team to 60 wins out of nowhere. Uh, former Spurs guy, great coach. They've had really bad coaching up until him. The last two coaches were terrible, um, and they have all this talent. So it's hard for me to believe they're not going to get better, not only with LeBron, but then the way better coaching. And Giannis, one of my favorite things about him is that every single year he just gets better and better and better. Um, and it's so obvious that he just keeps working in the offseason. So there's no... Outside of injuries, there's nothing stopping that guy. Um, Middleton has always been a really good player. Um, a lot of teams have targeted him, um, try to get him in trades, restricted free agency. Um, just a tall shooter. I wouldn't say necessarily athletic. Um, he's tall and long. He can guard the posi his position. But um, having that kind of shooter who's tall, and then you have Giannis, and then you hope Brogdon pops a little bit more. He's a little bit older of a rookie point guard, shooting guard type guy. Bledsoe is, uh, <laughs> Bledsoe's frustrating. He's kind of like the, he'll beat lesser guys and not show up against higher guys. Um, which sucks, I kind of liked him coming out of, uh, when I was like in high school, you know, in college. Um, when well, they got Thon Maker come off the bench. Thon Maker, who I think is lying about his age, he's 30 years old, but I mean, that's, <laughs> that's aggressive. Um, the thing is, in the East, when you have a player that good, and then Middleton, I feel like, is probably like a third a, could be a, like a low third star on a championship team. They're just missing that one guy. Yeah. Really good depth, really good length, and they got a great coach now in a bad conference. So to me, I think they're uh, Eastern Conference Finals team. Okay. So you definitely would say they're trending up then? Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, if you had to pick which one, if you had to pick Eastern or Western, I'm pretty sure we're all leaning on the Bucks on this one. Um, but yeah. We're just going to cover, we're going to, basically what we're going to do is in multiple videos we're going to go through the seven seeds and we're going to go six seeds all the way up to the number one seeds. And then we can go into more depth about the teams that were outside of the playoffs. It gives us an excuse to talk about the Lakers again. Um, but yeah, this has been Three Balls and a Puck. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, please do. Uh, if you dislike the video, I don't know why you would because we're pretty amazing guys. But if you do, feel free. Uh, if you want to get notified when we make videos just like this every week, just hit the little bell icon. If YouTube even notifies you anymore, I'm not too sure. Uh, but other than that, I've been Brad.
This has been Daniel, and that has been Kevin. Thank you for watching.